Hey guys, what's up? So it, this is a question and answer video I and mean, this is the second time that I'm shooting it just because uh, I spoke, spoke, spoke and spoke but then audio didn't record by that I mean, the video is like the entire way so this is my second time <laughs> recording it so anyways, I had posted a story on my Instagram asking you guys for questions and it's been a while I made a YouTube video so you know uh, so let's make it Panera. Oh, I don't want to speak again. Oh, and anyways, I removed the story uh, in uh, I removed the story in about an hour because I got a lot of questions and surprisingly, Yopali, all the questions were based on uh, programming because Askal, I've been talking a great deal about uh, programming and I've been sharing my client's progress and all those sort of things with people. Uh, are asking me more programming questions, which is a good thing. Uh, belly fat, custody, cutone, protein, custody, uh, protein, kati khane, all the sort of questions are matre on the pila. And now that's been significantly uh, lower. So I'll be answering three questions, hopefully uh, under five minutes each, because I want to be as brief as possible. At the same time, I don't. I want to answer all your questions. So more bistari bistari. I'll keep doing more uh, Q and A videos. So, anyways, the first question. As a ako was something around the lines for powerlifting my cardio kosari implement karne uh, and I'll be answering the question and I'll be saying the benefits and the less benefit stuffs of both of them. So, anyways, powerlifting if your goal is powerlifting, obviously uh, you're training for that one particular day when you want to test your PR, uh, maybe a midday, maybe a gym PR day, but you want to be as strong as possible and then you peak for that one particular day that you want to that everything revolves around so powerlifting but directly cardio ko kepani faida chaina so i would recommend in fact it's not a powerlifting like uh, cardio but there is a place and if you are training for powerlifting obviously not in powerlifting type of training you can do so many other things that i'm a when you're closer to the competition let's say uh, when you're like 10 weeks out or 15 weeks out or 12 weeks out from your comp day I would recommend you don't do any form of cardio because general health like Pugne cardio like I'm a powerlifting volume training or bodybuilding training or just like you walking around being active is enough for most cases given the fact you're in a healthy body fat range and if you're an athlete you need to be uh, power like cardio is generally programmed away from the competition or right after the competition in a building phase uh, body composition alterations and if you are trying to lose weight you are probably doing cardio for that reason cardio obviously helps uh, but you need to be tracking your calories you need to be tracking your macros and all those sort of things now let's get to the question uh, cardio normally you already know that high intensity interval training and low intensity steady state cardio so High intensity bone it's like when you do something for a max effort, let's say fifteen to fifteen to forty five seconds of max effort work, uh, followed by a rest period. Normally one is to three ratio one is to two, one is to one, depending on how advanced you are. The more advanced, the longer you rest, believe it or not, because you can exert yourself even harder. Uh, or like normally I would just say till your heartbeat cools down slightly and then you can go for another round. Steady state cardio, like the name implies, you just do something at a steady pace. So like I said, you need to be counting your calories, your macros, all those sort of things. Uh, anyways, if you want to be losing weight. So steady state cardio, say, uh, I start at I start at 15% of your total maintenance calories per week. Right? So if your maintenance calories per day is 3000 calories, let's say, hypothetically, and then um, I start at around 15% of that 300 calories that you need to burn throughout the week. So let's say 3,000 3, go, 3,000 go 15% is 450. I'll go video, my God, confused. Now I know it's 450 calories that you need to be burning throughout the week. So you can spread them out within three, three to seven days of the week. My, you divide that 400 calories. And since there is no exact way to track how much calories you're burning i would recommend that you use the exact same method so at least we know we're progressing at the right rate so i like for me normally i use this cardi to track my calories and it says 880 bio and but i use the same 
uh, treadmill every time if I have to do uh, cardio or you can use the treadmill at your gym the treadmill at your house that shows calories and you can follow that every single time so we're accurate for high intensity interval training I would normally start around four rounds of exercises followed by rest and then do it two to four times a week all right so I would always recommend start at the low, lowest range exercises for high intensity interval training could be anything that you can exert a lot of force in so I my two favorites are sled push and sprinting on a treadmill or sprinting on a field if you're if you have it available but you can also do battle ropes you can also do double unders if you can do double unders and your fitness is uh, like middle level go fitness so and you can do double unders is it can still be uh, high intensity but if you are like an elite level endurance athlete guy then double unders would still probably fall in under steady state go some form huh? uh, you could do burpees if you're like me not that fit in conditioning you can do a lot of different exercises for steady state it's normally uh, walking on an incline walking on the street but it should be of a brisk pace so your uh, heartbeat is around PE of six months more normally so you're not very tired but it's also like I live basta kheri relax just to pani now ne hisab le unsa so that's for steady state and you can do rows you can do uh, like concept two row guard down so if your fitness is a bit of a higher level then you could even do uh, single unders but uh, calories then you'll have to estimate because that's why there is no way to track calories uh, so normally you start at the lowest range that I told you four rounds for high intensity uh, set uh, 15% for 15 percent three times a week for uh, steady state but what's the upper end type question when comes so the limit I would say for high intensity per week is around uh, 30 rounds of exercises per week so you can do it up to four training sessions 30 rounds so maybe around seven to eight rounds per seven to eight rounds per exercises per week on lesser training sessions then I would uh, say like outer training session now you don't want to do more than 10 rounds per training session because it'll you will burn out quite a lot and for steady state you can uh, slowly build up to 30% of your maintenance calories per week so you can start at 450 that's 15% and then you can go up to 900 calories in the in the given period of time now the progressions uh, could be like high intensity you can go very slow like 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 or 4 6 8 10 and then rest and then start at 4 again or uh, when in steady state man, also you can do the same like 15 20 25 30 go in 15 17 19 like beside beside you can uh, make the progress depending on what your goals are if you want to lose fat then you do the do a lot of cardio matre cardio 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 matre and you'll definitely lose fat but there are limitations to both which as a power lifter we have to consider high intensity ko fayda let's talk about the fayda first high intensity ko fayda is it's very muscle sparing because it's very similar to power lifting that we do one we go and do one hard set and then we rest for a long time and then it goes very hand in hand manumna power lifting sangha so it's very muscle sparing uh steady state ko fayda bhane pachi it's very fatigue sparing so fatigue sparing bhane pachi you can walk for 30 minutes and then you can go do a squat it will not affect you at all but if you do like a sled push 10 round sled push gare and just pachi where a power lifting gare bhanda you'll be in a big 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 trouble but when you're doing high intensity interval training you have to consider doing it like uh, so suppose let's if you have a squat session tomorrow you don't want to be doing like a sled push very hard sled push other so other you probably do something like battle rope something uh, upper body focus manumna, and then when you have a bench press you don't want to be doing battle ropes before or whatever it may be uh, and limitation of limitation of high intensity interval training is like it, it will affect your training if you do too much so you should make the progress accordingly uh, uh and for steady state limitations can be let's put it in simple terms so if our body is a survival machine i've said it a couple of times and then when you're when you have a lot of muscle when you have a lot of body fat uh, and then you start walk you start walking your body uh, wants to be more efficient at walking because the specificity is that important when you walk if you do too much of steady state only then you could uh, your body will start to think that all these extra 
muscle all the extra fat we have is waste you lose fat but you also lose muscle if you do too much of uh, steady state cardio and it's time consuming too so if that session you don't want to be doing more than like 60 60 minutes of steady state ever 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 so normally 30 to 45 minutes nay i would recommend so i hope that answers the question it's really really long well the first time you on the shorter uh, time answer but i think uh, it covers basically everything that you need to know to program uh, cardio into your training program if you have more questions let me know but uh, let me move on to the second question for today all right second question of the day uh, he asks thoughts on german volume training for building phase so let's talk about german volume training first what it is and uh, what could be the potential benefits or whatever and uh, building block main goals if you're a power lifter and uh, that's what's uh, let's see how many boxes that it checks so the first uh, image that I searched up for German volume training was this uh, particular picture that I put up on the screen uh, so it's a three-day training program on a chest and back day one second day legs and abs third day uh, arms and shoulders so basically uh, it's not this single volume session is really really high so 10 by 10 for two main movements for chest and back when it's chest call I do uh, decline bench press ma 10 by 10 that's what the uh, pull ups ma 10 by 10 sa, and that's what the second day legs and abs one year so do that lower body movement ma they have 10 by 10 so squats ma 10 by 10 that's what deadlift ma 10 by 10 and arms ma bunny uh, tricep ma 10 by 10 with dips and your hammer curl 10 by 10 for biceps on your shoulders well i'd say i don't know shoulder shocker set i don't know what that means but anyways uh, in my experience, because I've done German volume training go one phase long time back when bodybuilding.com I used to follow Chris Gethin and he, there was a series called muscle building series or something and he, uh, this much he had us do like all the different uh, exercises variations so FST 7 theo, uh, UY3T1 theo, and German volume training theo, and he, last much it was like a DTP extreme Chris Gethin Gaffney uh, program theo on bodybuilding.com and theo, well i did german volume training and that was my least favorite uh, moment <laughs> i remember because i was so sore after the training session and that's my experience and your training program i say i think also competitor to be honest in volume than what chris gethin had made uh, not me do but like made the youtube community do all right so that's my that's what german volume training is that and that's my experience with it right uh, so what's the focus of a building block for power lifting? Uh, first ma building block like Agipani we discussed about it slightly but uh, it's the time when you make body composition alterations so if you want to bring up a weak muscle group or if you want to bring up a weak squat, weak bench press something now is the time to focus on the uh, smaller things that will carry over later so building block uh, number one focus is that number two focus is improve uh, work capacity so being able to do more volume i lay got it when later when you're peaking you can stay more injury free all those sort of things uh and then improve technical prowess like lifts ma sometimes technically like cause a squat guard like uh miss groove when bench press guard like uh exactly cause a guard not how uh like this is a time to make technical adjustments so normally training lighter uh, training learning gory rounds so when you do do german volume training uh, the no number one thing that i see for powerlifting i don't i don't want to talk about hypertrophy and all those sort of things but for powerlifting when you're doing german volume training the frequency is cut down it's so it's only once a week uh, frequency for squats bench press and deadlift uh, so first thing technical efficiency ramro hundaina because even though you're doing like 10 sets for squats, 10 sets for bench press, 10 sets for deadlift. Technically, Ramro no dehre chote gorni parsa normally in most cases. So that's the first uh, bad thing that I would see about German volume training. But peri building phase one, you go time of training is like training when uh, you can make training more fun. Unzani because uh, meat prep one balata you're mostly just doing squat, bench press, squat, bench press, deadlift, squat, bench press, deadlift. And training tends to get very stale uh, for some people, uh, not for me, not for other power lifters, but for some people it may get very stale. So to really spice up your training, you can uh, do something like this. So that could be one advantage of a German volume training. So 
meet prep soccer then if you just want to do three weeks of german volume training really push yourself really really hard get burnt out it's a fine thing fine way of doing things uh just just to really push yourself and then uh, get back to another power lifting sort of training but long term sustainability i don't see so much with this any uh, another other things that i want to consider is a german volume training one era one era but uh, i think you can do more volume if you just spread it out within the weeks for uh, some muscle groups and even for squats and squats and de- bench press and deadlift because for me personally i i easily do more than 10 sets of squats in a week uh, but not as much in one uh, particular day so you can easily uh, spread it out nicely and then control fatigue and then uh, have a train in all the different intensities when training on meals so one day i can do sets of eights maybe tens or go day i can do sets of fives because powerlifting mass specificity is very important on the specificity it means uh for loading is higher intensities because that's what we need to do as powerlifters and when we're doing 10 by 10 normally 10 by 10 garda intensities will be like be lower than 65% i'm sure specificity is not applied but like i said you can uh do it however you want it how however you want to do it and for some other uh assistant movement like barbell rows any sh- shoulder shock or set any right? calf raises la- leg uh, leg curls all these exercises you can uh do it more frequently if your goal is hypertrophy so it's it's a all in all my thought is it's it's a decent program and whoever the germans wrote it for maybe it was very specific to them it might not be to you and all the sort of things because what your training program is misinterpreted most of the time just because people want to do some sort certain program and uh, people who it was designed may may have had a specific need and it worked for them but it might not uh, necessarily work for you me personally i wouldn't do it uh, moving forward ever but i've done it in the past and it really challenges you and it will leave you sore for days so i hope that kind of answers the questions now you can weigh the pros and cons of this program if your focus is powerlifting you might not want to do all the volume in one day but if it's just hypertrophy or if you just want to push yourself really hard in the gym then it could be a decent program for <clears throat> for a building phase anyways i've been giving too long answers but it was expected of the video because all the questions are quite complex and i want to answer it as briefly as possible so last question for today comes from somebody i don't know but he asks how much do i charge for my workout program uh so i just want to now if you're interested in hiring me as a coach or whatever you are you're free to email me or you're free to write me a message on instagram facebook on youtube however it works just get in touch with me and i'll I'll share my details with you obviously but uh, I just want to talk about what a periodization means and what uh, coaching like what I actually offer in my coaching and if it's beneficial to you and if it is totally if it's worth it to you or if it's not worth it to you one so because like normally people think like I sell a training program a fixed training program for every single individual like online unsa ni like you say shako power building program or ph3 or uh, german volume training all these the, all these are very popular models of uh, online fixed template type of programming bottom now but the coaches who made those programs will obviously have a periodization plan for their athletes and even though some principles will apply like german volume one it won't be like what's that guy it won't it won't be like hiit dorian yates go but it will have volume but uh, it, it it will obviously be focused on volume but obviously they ha- periodize it so uh, you can perform the best when you want to and that's periodization and i will give you my thought process behind how i uh, write my training programming and so anyways periodization bane go kyo it's a logical sequence of training variables to maximize your adaptations so basically like koile hypertrophy phase rakhne koile आ स्ट्रेंथ फेज राख्ने कहिले बिल्ड गर्ने कहिले पिक गर्ने ऑल दो सर्ट अफ थिंग्स लाई एउटा प्लानमा राखेपछि इट्स इट्स कल्ड अ पिरियोडाइजेशन सो इन दिस वे यू रिड्युस द रिस्क अफ इन्जरी वन थिंग एन्ड देन यू आर पिकिङ एट द राइट अमाउन्ट फर द राइट एक्जेक्ट डे सो पावर लिफ्टिङ कम्पिटिसन गर्नु छ भने देर इज नो पोइन्ट बिइङ इन सेप ट्वेन्टी विक्स आउट अनि नट बिइङ एबल टु पर्फर्म वेन इट एक्चुअली मेटर्स अनि दिस इज द टाइम दैट यू चुज अनि पिरियोडाइजेसन पनि 
so this is if this is normally for athletes who want to be ready for some uh, some particular meet so we call it a periodization so depending on how far away you are from the meet not typically i don't take any athletes less than 12 weeks out uh only i don't take athletes who are who just want to train for a month because i cannot logically sequence the training if they just want to train for a month or something and it doesn't make sense because i cannot offer my values if i if 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 it's the case but mo- most of my athletes who I, i've been training currently fortunately have been very serious athletes and they uh they're focused on the long long term progress so periodization lapani uh we put it inside an annual plan banera unsa so what 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 are your goals for this year what's your goal for uh, the next two years any i try to have them have an annual plan when they're competing uh when they want time off when they're traveling all those sort of things i try to manage it into one uh, training system so annual plan let's just briefly talk about what annual plan means is basically annual plan when you go like the name implies it's like school ma bani amro hunda kheri they give us an annual plan ni like yo bela dase ko chutti yo bela tiyar ko chutti yo bela yo exam yo bela yo it's very similar to that but you probably noticed like the plan by but bani because of some certain circumstances it changes uh, but it's relatively the same so tesari ne uh, depending on the athlete i make a plan for as long as they want to be coached by me or uh some athletes like just train forever so for them i uh, sequence like milaero nor go like more training program like bin so everything goes into that when you're traveling when you have your birthdays when you have new years ma if you're uh, planning on not training so i can adjust training so deload banar i can uh, give your vacation on that kid deload or uh, new years on that kid you want training to be light if it's a birthday week if someone's getting if you are some someone close to you is getting married on or go and then you want to be in a particular shape at this time you want to be in a particular weight at this time so uh, everything uh, everything sabai kura tesma huncha bhanum na ek hisable ani it it annual plan just expresses the periodization concept into a much much bigger bigger scale and it's the foundation of your training plan ne chaina ka jane nai tha chaina bhani ta there's no point training like it, it could be fun like gym ma gar je paite garnu but if you don't have a purpose like what your goals are if you don't have any long term plans i don't think ke pani huncha so normally when i start uh, start my coaching i start with a questionnaire so i get to know more about you i talk to i've spoken to almost all i've spoken to all my clients on uh, video conference or in person before i started coaching with them so i want to know unaru ke garcha like how their lifestyle is kasto khaira cha kasto basira cha kata jancha gym gym ma ke equipment cha what your goals are future plans ke cha with uh, the sport and if you just want to stay fit if you want to compete if you want to uh, get in shape all those things like maxis ke i like all the things that i would require to fill in the annual plan i ask uh, a lot of questions and i get to know them like sathi jaste bhayalcha in like shuru ma nai and then i uh, after that i put it inside a training a block so do it as sheet so it's for the athlete it's for me and it's for me and the athlete and it's for me the one which i have i'll have their annual plan so when are they competing let's say in 16 weeks and i send them i tell them what my plan is for the 16 weeks but i just send them one week at a time and i i divide like that 16 weeks like more divide got into strength hypertrophy or peaking whatever rack into and then i send them a week week by week by week again it comprises of accumulation phase deload phases uh and different uh, types of training blocks inside that inside that training program but i'm not every everything goes inside that uh, and i send them a uh, one week at a time but depending on how they feel depending on uh, depending on some circumstances uh, injuries can come up uh, something emergency might happen so i uh try to adjust adjust it to the best of our Uh, ability as a coach and as a client to get the best possible results given the circumstances on the updated weekly one on the example even though i have a plan there is slight deviation to the plan obviously baneko jasto jaile pani sabai kura hundai hundai na and uh, considerations that goes inside the training program like agi ko the questionnaire ma i ask them how old they are uh, 
get out he get you i need to know because normally younger people handle more volume while older people handle more intensity all the sort of things a uh, female can handle more volume men can handle less volume r- relatively uh, it depends on uh, their genetic structure like some people like for example i have very thick joints one of my kisable and this uh, i can stay relatively injury free touch with uh, compared to somebody somebody who's got who's got like a who's got very tiny joints un arko a uh, little bit different programming unsa but they can uh, look more muscular because the joints are small and everything else looks uh, big so uh, depending on that i put hypertrophy work all those sort of things uh, some people fiber typing unsa some people are very fast twitch Uh, dominant some are very slow twitch so uh, co- some people respond better to high reps some people respond better to lower reps and some like if if somebody is very high twitch dominant and i have them do like a lot of hypertrophy work they get sore for days and days and days so this could uh, um, comes in comes in consideration uh, anthropometry once uh, uh, so if you if you so, some people have like very long arms uh, and then their deadlift is really good but the bench press suffers because uh, because the arms are very long and uh, some people have long femurs so they cannot handle as many uh, squ- squats as possible all these things come in state come in factor psycho- psychological characteristics some people are always beast mode beast mode mood mounts so some people are some people are chill like matlab nahi na bako so so lot of things i Uh, take in consideration mm, training history like pehla background ke the if you were an athlete for example i played tennis all my life like like from the time i remember so my work capacity is really really high but you know because i was always running around so modest man chila you have to give them more work to do because ali ali got it like ke pani hunde hunde na uh any bodybuilding background crossfit background all these uh, sort of things make a big difference any Uh, I keep all these things in consideration when I'm writing a training program, and finally, some some athletes have multi multi stage plans. But I'm not so. Uh, I I I've been fortunate enough to work with a triathlete as well. So, whose uh, goal is in powerlifting? Most of the coaches that I see make mistakes is they give their goals to their athletes, and that could be a problem. So, multi stage annual planning one here, but you know, so. he's a triathlete so i need to know what his triathlete goals are rather than just saying oh because i like being jack you should also be jack <laughs> you should also uh, be like 95 100 kg and uh, triathlete triathlete man bhai also testo banera unde unde na so some people have different goals i take that as uh, i take that into consideration as well uh, some people love powerlifting but their ultimate goal will be Uh, bodybuilding so i cannot only have them do squat bench press deadlift so different different lo- lo- lots and lots of things when so cost the type of competition kills so i keep a lot of things in mind before i write my training program and i hope you get the gist of what i'm trying to say anyways with that being said uh, thank you so much for watching this is turning out to be like a 30 minute video Uh, I'm going to post it anyways because I've spoken so much. If you watched the video or if you liked any of the answers, please uh write down write them down in the comments below because it gives me motivation to uh do more questions like this and keep your questions coming. I and if you're interested in coaching because I work so hard for my coaching as well. If you're interested in coaching, please let me know and I will talk to you next time.